Today, I'm really excited to be joined by Ms. Tiachi Kapilin, President of Sun Asia Energy and member of the Philippine Solar and Energy Storage Association. Thank you so much, Ms. Tiachi, for visiting us at Leader Associates Office. And thank you also, Molly, for inviting me here in this wonderful office. It's been a while since I was here last, and it's nice to be back. Thank you so much. And Ms. Tiachi, as you are the event ambassador for our seventh edition ASEAN Clean Energy Week, can you share with us your most memorable experience or your most exciting memories from attending our past events? Um, you know, Leader Associates came to the Philippines way back in 2016. And it really came at a time when the renewable energy, particularly solar, was in transition. It was at that time when the feed-in tariff ended and a lot of developers of solar were confused and at a loss. And so when Leader Associates um, first held its conference in Manila and brought um, investors and thought leaders to the conference, a new door opened that um, uh, introduce the commercialization of solar because through that conference we were able to share our experiences and learn from the experiences of others of how they moved on after the post feeding tariff and that was very critical because we didn't know what to do next and the logical next step was commercialization and that conference provided a platform for us to learn what to do next so it was really something that we had to be thankful for you don't really know how conferences um, give um, benefits but looking back that was really the contribution of leader associates at that point in time thank you so much we are also very very grateful to have thought leaders like you to join our event. And speaking of the next trends, because Sun Asia, you are the promoter of clean energy technologies in the Philippines, from solar to storage to floating solar. How do you foresee the upcoming technology trends in the region? Um, three things. The first is that the whole region, including the Philippines, have set very ambitious decarbonization targets. In the Philippines, that would be 46 gigawatt by 2040. That's a lot. And the only way we can scale up to that level is to address the problem of land. And therefore, we went into floating solar because um, the Philippines has narrow land. And considering the uh, competition for land use, real estate, you know, roads and um, agriculture, land will be very scarce. And therefore, if we want to achieve the 46 gigawatt, we have to do floating solar. And also, we have to introduce and integrate solar with storage. Right now, we can only supply daytime requirements. If we want that to scale up, I mean solar to scale up, we have to offer solutions to those who are looking for long-term supply of electricity for longer hours. So battery and storage and other forms of storage and technology that can store renewable energy will be the next frontier. And who gets there first will really crack the commercial solution to this because right now storage is still expensive but just like the story of solar over time the price of this technology has gone down tremendously so solar is the cheapest renewable energy technology today and we're hoping that the battery, the storage, the hydrogen will learn its lesson from solar and um, reduce its price so that we can really offer that long-term solution and provide a platform and a pathway to decarbonization. Yes, commercialization and reaching the economics of scale is very important. And as we all know that the Philippines is with no doubt the rising star of the year in terms of renewable energy development in ASEAN with such 
significant progress in the market. What's your expectation for this year's ASEAN Clean Energy Week, and how do you think the event will benefit the clean energy momentum in the industry? Where Leader Associates has always been uh, an innovator in the uh, in the conference space. So I think you were the first, if I, I believe that you were the first um, conference organizer or event organizer that brought investors. And this is something that is going to be critical. Um, 46 gigawatt, as I mentioned earlier, is a lot of installation, and that is large deployment. Um, local business cannot fund, cannot finance that scale. And therefore, the government has opened up the energy sector to um, allowing 100% foreign ownership. This kind of a policy will attract investors. And I hope in the next conference and in the conferences that are there to come by leader associates in the Philippines, you will, in the way that you have done this before, invite interested parties, technology solution provider, so that together we can really um, go into decarbonization and achieve the ambitious target. So the trend is to get that number of delegates and participants who can trans help the Philippines transition to that uh, decarbonized future and um, harness all of the uh, capital that is necessary to build 46 gigawatt. Yes, I think the key message here is collaboration, the partnerships, and by partnering with South Asia, with more stakeholders in the market, together we can achieve a more sustainable, more circular future. Thank you so much for staying with us, Ms. Tiachi. And thank you very much, uh, Molly. It's been a pleasure working with Leader Associates, as always. Thank you so much.